Hi guys, it's Norman Sullivan from Harrogown Lifestyle and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're working on the camper van build. And specifically, we're now looking at how we extend our range and how we extend the amount of time that we spend off grid. Specifically today, we're gonna to look at the first thing that currently challenges us when we go off grid, and that is a lack of power. So today, we're looking at fitting solar panels. Now, solar panels are not for everyone. And today we want to go over a few questions. Firstly, we want to understand whether or not solar might be right for you. We want to talk a little bit about what size of panel you might need, what type of panel you might want to go for. And then the main part of the video, we're going to look at the installation process. And specifically, we're going to look at installing rigid solar panels on the fiberglass roof of our pop top camper. So firstly, do you need solar in your van? Well, there are probably two primary reasons for looking to have solar in your van. Firstly, just to top up your battery so you get an extra day or day and a half out of it. Or alternatively, because you want to live off grid and you don't want to be plugging into the mains all the time. We're certainly not in the latter category. We have a van that's designed for going away for a couple of days. We just want to be able to live comfortably for a couple of days without having to worry about either driving the van or having to plug it into a main socket somewhere. The reality is that there are lots of resources already available online to help you answer this question. And one place that I would absolutely direct you to is the site for Rain Automotive. That's R-A-Y-N-E, Rain Automotive. We've got all of our electrical installation equipment from Rain Automotive. And one of the great things they've got on their website is a calculator that allows you to identify what size of solar panels might be right for you and what the impact of those solar panels would be on your battery based on consumption. We used it before we sized the solar panel that we required based on what we've got in the van. Another consideration, of course, is the size of panel that you can physically fit on your van and what it will look like. And one of the things that we looked at very carefully before we decided on the panel that we were going to fit on the roof of the van was how it would look and how it would fit. So we did this diagram here showing all of the various different panels that we considered and how they actually looked on the roof of the van. What became quite apparent to us is in reality, if you're gonna put a panel on the roof of your van, it's a pretty big, pretty chunky bit of equipment anyway. And of course, there's an economy of scale the larger they get in that you add a little bit less weight for a substantial amount of additional power. So we probably went for a larger panel than our calculations identified we required because we felt the 215 watt panel that we went for was more than sufficient to cover our daily usage, at least in summer, but also it would fit well on the roof of our van, it would sit comfortably within the ridged area on the roof of the van, and also it wouldn't look terrible for anybody looking on from around the van. So lots of things to consider when you are looking at the size of panel that you want to fit in your van, and it's not all about power consumption, usage, and charging requirements. So most people with pop tops tend to go for flexible or semi-flexible solar panels, but I've gone with rigid panels. Why have I done that? Well, a number of different reasons. Firstly, my roof is ridged and it just wouldn't sit smooth on, on, a, on a ridged roof. I also, I don't want to bond my panel to the roof. I am happier putting bolts through the roof and firmly securing the panel on in that way. The reality also on the bonding versus bolts argument is that I've counted, and I think I've got somewhere in the region of 14 or 15 holes already in the roof. So another couple to secure this solar panel to my roof is not going to make a huge difference. Just so you get a sense of the size, because this is a large panel that we're installing at 215 watts. Ian, do you want to come in and just give a sense of scale? So it's quite a serious bit of panel that we're mounting on the roof. The other thing that I wanted to talk about quickly are the different types of mount that are available. There are two primary types of mount available to fix these rigid panels to the roof. The first one that I thought I wanted to use were these ABS uh, pieces, which attach on the corner of the panel and on either side. Now, when you see photographs of these, you think, oh, they look really neat and tidy and, and a great solution. But the reality is when you actually get them, they're huge and they weigh a ton. I reckon these things weigh about two kilograms each and it's completely unnecessary. So I thought, no, no, we'll dispense with those. And a much better option are these, what they call Z clips. They weigh next to nothing. They're low profile. We won't see them on the roof. So I am going with these. And that's gonna save me a couple of kilograms, thereby substantially reducing the difference in weight between 
a rigid panel and a flexible one. So we've come onto the roof and you can see the challenge that we would have fitting any panel to the roof with all of these ridges. And in particular, when I put those ABS mounting blocks on, which are intended to be bonded to the roof, just how challenging that would be. There's just no way that we could actually fit those on in any realistic way. And that's why these much smaller, much neater, much more low profile aluminium brackets are a much better solution for us. This also highlights how important it is to size your panels correctly, especially if you do have a strange or a ridged roof like we have, to ensure that it will actually seat neat and tidily on top of the space you have available. The next thing we're going to do is to fit the aluminium brackets to the rigid panel. We're going to use six brackets all around the panel based on the recommendations of the supplier. And there are our brackets installed. We've breached engineering convention by putting the bolts upside down, which is it's not good practice, but we've used nylock nuts and we've also used some, some Loctite compound on the nuts as well so that they don't fall out. And it makes for a neat installation. And here you can see just how much neater it is than those large ABS plastic mounts that I thought looked so good. So we've now taken the panel outside to test it. It's really important to test that the panel's working before we go to all the trouble of fitting it on the roof. And we do on occasions get panels that don't work appropriately. The thing you have to remember is that as soon as you expose that panel to light, it's live and it can shock you. So you have to be very, very careful or even cover it up when you are installing it. So all we've done just now, just to make sure that it's working, we've attached a test meter, Ian, there we are. So we can see that's on the 0 to 50 volt scale and we're getting a reading. So the panel is certainly functioning. We'll also test it when we fit it on the roof and we'll test it with a Bluetooth controller that we're going to use as well. We've also now temporarily rigged up the panel to the controller in the van just to ensure that it is actually working when attached to the controller. And now that we're comfortable that it is and we've checked it, we're going to mount it on the roof. So what's really important as we start to position the panel on the roof is to make sure that we've got it in exactly the right location and also that we've identified the appropriate location for where we're going to bring the cables through from the roof. One of the things that we've got to think about in a pop top is obviously the difference between the gap between the metal roof and the pop top roof when it's open from when it's closed. And what that means in practical terms is we need to find a way to create a loop of cable inside that doesn't get damaged, but that moves up and down quite satisfactorily with the roof. And what's critical here also is ensuring that where we're gonna fit the gland in the roof for passing the cables through, A, there's enough clearance between the pop top roof and the rigid solar panel, and B, we've got sufficient cable inside to allow it to wrap around and come through and pass through the roof. So these are all things that you really gotta think about and plan out before you drill any holes. And up to this stage, we've had the panel on and off the roof two or three times, just measuring, aligning, and making sure that that hole's coming up inside the roof exactly where we want it. Also, don't be tempted to drill these holes with the roof closed, because there's a real danger you will drill through the canvas of the pop top as well. So, it's the old adage, measure twice, cut once. Having now sorted out where all of the holes are going, and how the whole thing's gonna to come together on the roof for the neatest installation. We've now washed the whole roof because I'm conscious that once we put the solar panels on, it's gonna be almost impossible to do that for the bits that are under the panel. So we've given it a good wash. We're gonna let it dry and uh, we'll have a cup of coffee and we'll come back to it in a minute. So now that the roof is starting to dry, we've got the panel back up, ready to sort out its final position. We've got the holes in the roof for the cables coming through the panel. It's really important, especially as we want to keep this gland hidden under the panel to do everything in the right order. So we've had to cut the ends, the connector ends off the panel. That's not a problem. I always knew I'd have to do that to minimize the size of holes that we were making in the roof. Um, but what we've also done is we've made sure that those cables are marked up as positive and negative so we don't get confused. You can see we fed the cables through the glands and then through the aperture that's going to protect it from the elements on the roof and then those cables are going to pass through the hole in the roof. 
And what we've got to be very careful to do is to ensure that that gets sealed down onto the roof just before we secure the panel down. And that way the whole thing will be very nice and neat and weather tight and there won't be any obvious cables rattling about or hanging about on the roof. And we also won't have this pretty hideous looking bulbous thing as another protrusion on our roof, which I don't really want. We've now got the panel lined up exactly where we want it on the roof so that we can start to drill the holes for the brackets. The gland isn't secured yet. It's not been mastic down, but we'll get the holes all drilled before we do that. From a positioning point of view, we've chosen to mount the panel as far back on the pop top as possible. And that's for a couple of very good reasons. One, we want the most of the weight to be taken on the area where the scissor hinges are, which is right at the back. But secondly, obviously we want to minimize the weight on the pop top when we raise and lower it. And with the pop top located right at the back, the work will be being done for us mechanically. The final thing is cosmetically, we think it just looks better sitting right on the back of the pop top. And of course, it also means that the cables are better aligned where they come through the roof so that we won't have cables dangling across the roof underneath inside the cabin where you can see them. The other interesting element is that cosmetically, even with that extremely large 215 watt panel on, when you're walking around the van within any kind of distance of it, you just don't see the panel at all. And if we walk around here by the side of it, you'd have to be eight foot tall before you could see the panel. You see it at the back, but in actual fact, I think that looks very neat and tidy. And again, as soon as we get around to the side, we lose it anyway. The other thing that I wanted to show you is just how close that panel is to the roof when using these low profile aluminium Z mounts. So obviously it's not as flush as a flexible or a semi-flexible panel, but it's also nowhere near as significant as a roof rack on the roof. We've now carefully propped the panel up on its side. We've got the right length of cable coming through the glands, tighten the glands up. The next thing I'm now going to do is to clean the surface of the roof with methylated spirit and apply some Sikaflex all around the gland here and then seal it to the roof before we lower the panel and fix it through the holes that we've now drilled in the roof. After sealing the gland, our next job was to bolt the solar panel to the roof itself. And we did this using stainless steel bolts with some Sikaflex to seal the holes to ensure that there was no water ingress. And we both used Sikaflex around the bolts themselves and a thin bead of it around the holes between the roof and the bracket, just for safety. You can also see that as a result of keeping the gland below the solar panel, that it's not visible when the panel's in use or when the pop top's up. And also, of course, it has the added advantage of the solar panel itself prevents any water falling anywhere near the hole that you've drilled in the roof for the cables to pass through. Now what I'm doing, I uh, said we had to cut the connectors off to make the smallest hole possible in the roof. I'm now fitting a new set of connectors to these cables. Again, they've just got waterproof glands on them, crimping the metal connectors on the end, and then these pieces fit over, push through, and they'll connect together and screw on. The important thing to do is to make sure you keep your polarity correct. And when you cut the connectors, off make sure you remember which way it's going and if you're at all unsure check the polarity before you plug into anything the other thing that we want to make sure and you can see i've left a little bit of an s bend in the cables there is when the roof closes that it doesn't catch on those cables so we're just testing that now nice curve perfect no stress on the cables that's what we want so the last bit of the installation is pretty easy. It's just about running the cables to your battery. And this is something I've done. There's no advantage in showing you what's happening here, but my cables run down the back, right down here, 
run along the back of this panel here and then they come out right at my battery and here they are connected into a Victron MPPT solar charging unit before going on to my 95AH leisure battery and I've plugged that in and checked it and the solar is now charging my battery so that's a successful installation don't forget when you're connecting this up that you do need a fuse between the battery and the positive output of the charger. The other great thing with these Victron MPPT chargers, this is a smart uh, charger. So what it means is I can control it by Bluetooth and I can see exactly how much energy I'm getting from the, uh, from the solar panel and I can see the impact that it's having on my battery. Great bit of kit. So we've now just come out for a run. And as you can see, with a bit of space around us, you can hardly see the solar panel at all. And I'm really happy with the way that installation looks. The other thing we're now gonna do is to take it for a fast run. We haven't heard any noises from it so far. So we'll take it for a fast run on the motorway to make sure that there's no adverse noises associated with the panel. We've now come onto the motorway to see if there's any additional noise at speed. What speed are we doing in? Just under 70. Just under 70 miles an hour. Absolutely no discernible noise whatsoever from the panel. So I would call that a success. So there you go. How to fit a rigid solar panel to your pop top. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you have, please do like and follow the channel. And I'll look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Stay safe, guys.